Hi, I'm Susan Williams Gifford, Carver State Representative. I'm asking for your vote on November 8th to continue fighting for our fair share of local aid. I'll also continue to advocate for regional transportation, our economy, senior citizens, veterans, and funding to combat the opioid addiction crisis. Local aid has always been a priority. This year, Carver will receive $9.8 million in Chapter 70 aid for education, an increase of $90,800, and $1.4 million in unrestricted general aid, an increase of $58,000. While there were meaningful recommendations made by the Chapter 70 Foundation Review Commission, implementation will be costly and can only be done gradually. You told me Carver needs more transit options, and that's why I've been working with GATRA to increase services here. I've also been an advocate for extending commuter rail service from Lakeville to Wareham since I was a Wareham select woman. This will directly benefit Carver commuters. Regional transportation is one of the keys to stimulating the local economy, but tourism and agriculture also play very important roles. I secured earmarks for our visitor information centers and served on the Cranberry Revitalization Task Force, which focused on preserving our important cranberry industry. Our report includes recommendations addressing renovation, technology and innovation, and exit strategies. In fact, my recommendation to make the Chapter 61A tax exemption permanent for bogs that would remain as conservation land was adopted in the Governor's Municipal Modernization Bill. I've been endorsed by the Mass Laborers District Council saying that my tireless advocacy of issues and protections benefiting working class families has been commendable. The National Federation of Independent Business endorsed me for my votes on issues important to small business owners. Our population is aging, so we need to make sure we protect our senior citizens and provide them with every possible benefit. That's why I voted for a $1.19 million increase in Council on Aging grants, bringing the funding formula to $10 per elder per year, with an expected increase to $11 next year. I also secured a $55,000 grant for a COA director in Wareham. I'll continue my fight to reform Chapter 40B, the outdated affordable housing law, so we can have local control for the affordable housing we really need for our seniors and others. We owe a debt of gratitude to all who served our country in the military. In my terms as state rep, we've passed very important bills that give housing priorities to our vets and protect their honor from imposters. Massachusetts remains number one in the nation when it comes to programs for veterans. Protecting our environment is vital for our future. Before being appointed as Assistant Minority Whip, I served as the ranking member of the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture for 12 years and voted in July to override the governor's veto of $125,000 for water quality monitoring in Buzzards Bay. I was proud to work with Governor Baker and my colleagues across the aisle to pass groundbreaking legislation to combat the terrible epidemic of opioid addiction. We passed a comprehensive law to limit prescriptions, improve patient access to treatment, and expand training, increasing addiction services spending by 65% over last year. I have never voted for a tax increase and fought to repeal the ill-conceived automatic gas tax increase. I believe state government should live within its financial means just as you and I must do. We must look for ways to reduce spending and waste before asking taxpayers to give up more of their hard-earned pay. As such, I've been endorsed by Citizens for Limited Taxation. 
As state representative, I am your liaison to state government. I take pride in the fact that I've helped so many people resolve issues they've had. There's no, so, no substitute for experience in that regard. But most importantly, you've been telling me what matters to you and I've been listening. I've been working hard to find solutions. I've been your voice and have been present to vote on your behalf every time. In fact, 559 times in this last legislative session. But it's not just about showing up. It's about being there to be part of the discussion and debate the issues. I always think of you before I vote, and I take your opinions very seriously. I have a record of service that I am very proud of. Thank you for your consideration on November 8th. I'm Sarah Hewins, and I'm running this November 8th to be your state representative. I'm the daughter of a missionary. My mother taught me my values, she taught me about hard work, and she taught me about public service. I believe that being a, your state representative is all about public service. I'm running to give you a choice this time. I don't think we've had much of a choice for the past 14 years. I've worked hard for the town of Carver for the past 20 years, but there are issues that really can't be dealt with on the local level, that are regional issues. We need someone in the State House who's going to help us with our affordable housing. We need good affordable housing that respects the residents of the town and respects the people who need to live in the affordable housing. When I was on the planning board, I spearheaded some local zoning that requires a certain percentage of affordable housing in all in new developments in Carver and that the exterior of all these developments look the same as everyone else's. We need the broken formula for state aid for our public schools to be fixed. It's no longer working for a town like Carver. We have a huge opioid epidemic in town that is also regional. Um, I am one of the founding members of a, an organization, a nonprofit organization here in town called uh, the Young People's Alliance of Carver, or YPAC. We founded this because we were tired of people talking about the opioid epidemic, and we wanted to do something about it for our young uh, children. It's an after-school program that is supervised and is for middle school kids. It involves high school kids, seniors, and everyone in between. It's a community effort, and there's just not enough state funding out there for drug and substance abuse prevention programs like YPAC. That's something that needs to be done in the State House. We also have a need for good economic development that respects and protects our environment, our drinking water, and our agriculture. That's something that I have a 100% success rate as uh, a member of the planning board in the past and also as your former uh, conservation agent for, for 15 years. So I do have a record of getting things done I've spearheaded it efforts um, on, as a member of the Board of Selectmen, for example, to uh, provide you with trash and recycling pickup at half the going rate. And with other Selectmen, we worked hard to lower the cost of our new elementary school by using money from solar projects. I'm a doer, not a talker, but I can't do this without you. I need your vote this November 8th. I would appreciate it very much, and I will work for you. Thank you.